for joining us on the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Coming up, Honorable Alex Boyd Knights has been re elected Speaker of the House of Assembly for the fourth consecutive term. Former broadcaster Edward Regist has been appointed a Deputy Speaker. The UK market wants to secure a steady supply of bananas through the Fair Trade Organization. And Honorable Speaker of the House of Assembly dismisses claims by the opposition. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories after this. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. Thanks for staying with us. Honorable Alex Boyd Knight has been re-elected Speaker of the House of Assembly for the fourth consecutive term. At the first meeting of the first session of the Ninth Parliament at the House of Assembly on Friday, members of Parliament voted via secret ballot to elect a new Speaker. Honorable Knight was nominated by the government side, while the opposition nominated Judith Pastina. There are 21 votes in favor of Alex Boyd Knight and... 10 votes in favor of Judith Pestino. I now declare Alex Boyd Knight elected Speaker of the House of Assembly. I, Alex Boyd Knight, do swear that I will faithfully bear true allegiance to the Commonwealth of Dominica according to law. So help me God. I, Alex Boyd Knight, do swear that I will faithfully execute the office of Speaker without fear or favor, affection or ill will, and that in the execution of the functions of that office, I will honor, uphold, and preserve the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica. So help me God. Following Friday's election, Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt congratulated the re-elected Speaker. We elected you because we feel that you have the qualifications to be Speaker of the House of Assembly. I look forward to working with you as the leader of this House as we seek to advance some very important matters relating to the well-being and welfare of the people of this beautiful country, Dominica. Other members of Parliament also extended congratulations to Honourable Knights. Madam Speaker, you've served this House from 2000, and 2000 with distinction and I think you have served this house, you have proven to this house your ability and competence in giving directions to the proceedings of this honorable house. Madam Speaker, you have also shown that you can bring and maintain order and command respect to this honorable house. You have demonstrated profound knowledge of the rules governing the house which keeps you in command of all, in all aspects of the proceedings of this parliament. Well, let me congratulate you on your willingness to serve for a fourth term in this house. It is not easy uh, to be in public life when you have sacrificed the better part of 15 years, going into 20 years to serve with us, to give direction and guidance to this house. I've been here since 2001, Madam Speaker, and I have observed with great admiration your stewardship, the way that you have guided us, you have directed, and you have been able to manage uh, the debate in the House. Madam Speaker, I rise in this honorable house to congratulate you on your appointment as the Speaker of the House. I wish you the best in your period of five years and look forward to objective debate in the House. Meantime, former broadcast senator Edward Regist was appointed deputy speaker of the House of Assembly during Friday's meeting of Parliament. I, Edward Regist, do swear that I will faithfully bear true allegiance to the Commonwealth of Dominica according to law, so help me God. I, Edward Regis, do swear that I will faithfully execute the office of Deputy Speaker 
without fear or favor, affection or ill will, and that in the execution of the function of that office, I will honor, uphold, and preserve the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica. So help me God. This is just another opportunity for me to continue in national service. I have served all my life um, this country. I have served in the area of nation building and I look forward to continuing in that service. And so to God be the glory, great things he has done. Members of the government and opposition sides congratulated Senator Regist on his appointment. Mr. Regis, I'm in, in Madam Speaker, you have a very experienced, firm, and knowledgeable individual. And I have no doubt that you will also be a willing on the study. And I have no doubt also that together the two of you will make a formidable team in chairing and managing the affairs and proceedings of this Honorable House. And I believe that Mr. Edward Regis, having served as the president, former president of the National Youth Council, as well as on several village councils, and several community organizations and groups, he will in fact make a significant contribution to the House in the position as Deputy Speaker and the Senator. Meantime, at Friday's sitting, members of Parliament took the oath of allegiance. His Excellency President of Dominica, Charles Saver, inspected a guard of honor before addressing Parliament. In related news, re-elected Speaker of the House of Assembly, Alex Boyd Knights, has dismissed suggestions that the opposition was prevented from placing questions on the order paper. Honorable Knights explained to Parliament on Friday that it is customary that the first meeting of Parliament following general elections, no questions or motions are placed on the order paper. This is because questions and motions come from members. And there is a standing order which says that you are not a member until you take your oath of allegiance. So therefore, no question can be entertained from a stranger, which is what you are until you become a member. You see, and I need to advise the House accordingly, an elected representative does not become a member of the House until he or she has taken his or her oath. It is then that the privilege of asking questions and making motions is bestowed on the member of the House. So this is why, as a practical move, it's simply not put on the other paper because we don't have members as such yet. The Ministry of Agriculture is working closely with the Fair Trade Organization to provide a steady supply of bananas to the UK market. The Ministry is bringing in 20,000 tissue culture plantlets to the Prime Minister's office and an additional 40,000 plantlets under the Banana Accompanying Measures program. These plantlets will be given to targeted farmers of the Fair Trade Organization and those who have commercial farms or five acres or more. Head of the Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit, Ryan Anselm, explains the process. We are bringing tissue plantlets, which is basically taking it from a mother plant, sell from a mother plant, put it in a, Test tube. In a, in, in a, a nutrient agar so it will grow quickly and multiply it. So that is what we are bringing and it will be vigorous when we bring it in. These are the Cavendish Williams. and Williams varieties. <coughs> Um, we're also trying to bring in some, some new varieties of the Cavendish um, varieties in terms of, of, of trying it out. Um, but most of the varieties will be Williams for, for the commercial purposes. And we're also going to harden it at Portsmouth. And moving forward also, we're getting some assistance from the BAM to renovate London Dairy. Mm -hmm. One would know that there's a, a hardening facility at London Dairy, so we will renovate that to the most of the hardening there. And once it plants, it will take about four to six weeks to win, and then another four to six weeks to harden. The plantlets are expected to be on island in the first week of April. Though these varieties are not black Sikatoka resistant, they are the only varieties accepted on the UK market. We are working with Rainfresh, and Rainfresh requires that they, they only buy um, Cavendish or Williams varieties. So bringing in the FIA that is resistant, the FIA varieties that is resistant, even the CIRAD varieties that we've been working with for over three years now, it kind of, Winfresh will not buy it. 
Still in agriculture, seven resistant varieties of bananas will be introduced in Dominica to manage the black Sikotuka disease. With the help of the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CARDI, these varieties will be evaluated in the different ecological zones of Dominica. And these varieties will, be, will, will target okay. so, small subsistence farmers, backyard farmers. So moving forward, um, backyard people will not be planting Williams. Okay. Um, they will not be planting Cavendish. Um, small subsistence farmers will not be planting that because it's going to, 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 to really um, build the inoculation level. Um, so if we have commercial farmers planting Cavendish or Williams, we can target our spraying program more effectively. And these people, we give them resistant varieties. Black Sikotoka Management Coordinator Carol Abraham says resistant varieties are necessary for residential areas due to the fact that systematic chemicals should not be sprayed in these areas. Serenade is a biofungicide, it's you know, not, not potent and so on. But the tilt and the bank it and the volley, we would never spray that in a residential area. It therefore means that all people in residential areas, and you have some areas that have 150 plants and so on, they definitely would have to go into serious cultural practices, you know, composting and so on, and leave that chemical part of it out. By we the way, recommend it. Hmm? a systemic is something that is absorbed by the plant, okay? Because that is what, you're spraying the leaves, but obviously if there's a bunch, it's going to get wet, basically. So we always advise that you sleeve, I mean, it's not we advise, and that's been the practice. Tilt and bank it and those guys are systemics, and you certainly want to sleeve your fruits before the spray comes in. So whatever stage your fruit is at, this fruit has to be sleeved? It should be, yeah, it should be sleeved because the fruit can absorb it as well. The manco zeb and serenade, they sit on their protectants, they sit on the leaf. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they wouldn't sit on the thing, but they're not absorbed, so that's the difference, okay? So making them safer, because serenade is a biofungicide, it's a both a fungicide and a bactericide. It's used in controlling bacterial problems in lettuce and various things like that. So it's a safer product. But um, the other guys like volley and tilt, that's for the field, not, not for residential areas. So, and we have a lot of planting and bananas in residential areas, so these farmers, we would target those tissue culture, the resistant varieties to those farms. The changing Kathy Future Children's Art Troop from China will make a two-day visit from February 24th. Dominica is the last stop for their world tour, which included the United Nations, the United States, Barbados, Bahamas, and the Dominican Republic. The art troupe, founded in May 1995, is one of the largest children's art troupe with the most art categories and comprises the largest number of actors in China. Over the past 20 years, children of the Cathay future have set their feet on 410 cities and towns worldwide with 380 performing items. In 2013, they successfully fulfilled the Global Performing Tour program, giving 1,000 performances in 100 countries, starting from Indonesia in 1995 and ending in Qatar in 2013. On February 25th, they will celebrate both the Chinese and Dominican cultures in a joint performance with the members of the Flamboyant Dancers. This will be a first-time culture exchange at the Ara Course of Culture, commencing at 6 p.m. The troupe, which comprises 10 branches and 800 members, has flown to countries spreading the message of peace and unity, particularly to 30 SOS children villages, orphanages, and also remote corners of Africa. In 2001, the art troupe was nominated Chinese Children's Art Troupe of Friendship by the Chinese People Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries. The Chinese Embassy hopes that all the Dominicans who love the arts can enjoy the free performance on February 25th. The Rosa Public Library will, for the sixth time, host its annual Animal Awareness Day. Coordinator of the event, Librarian Renita Charles, says this is another opportunity to share knowledge with the general public. The library gives us information, so therefore we always found it like it would be fitting to have something where children can actually get ideas to formulate their own stories and so forth. So we came up with Animal Awareness Day so that we can showcase these animals and children can have an opportunity to view different animals that are on island, whether it is as it is, they are held as pets or in the wild. 
The library will be partnering with the Forestry and Wildlife Division to secure the animals and to ensure safety during showcasing. Petro Caribe has also partnered with the library to transport the animals to and from the grounds of the library. Here's a list of the animals which patrons can see. We have, um, we have rabbits, we have guinea pigs, we have London sea turtles, we have the snake, we have peacocks, we have crabs, agouti, maniku, basically the lisgo sheep, goat, pig, you know, all these different animals that children really, really like to see. We're just working on the horse and the donkey, which would make it extra special for that event. Although there has been challenges, the event has grown over the years, and Charles says it is an affair that those who have attended in the past look forward to annually. If you had any child that has been in a preschool environment, or like the kindergarten sections of the primary schools, they look forward to it. Like when they come one year, they ask their parents every day, <laughs> when are they coming back to the library? So we can see it as the wood of the event has grown and the number of animals that we have each year has also grown. The only problems that we're having is to like um, get a donkey and a horse that we can bring to the event because you know children would love to see plus the donkey is a rare animal especially rare species for Dominica so we would love to have so we're asking the general public anyone has one and they are willing to display or showcase that animal, they can contact us at the library so that we can make the event an exciting and memorable one for our, for our children. Charles extended an invitation to the general public to take the opportunity to visit this mini zoo for a small fee of $2. We are asking students, children, preschool age, kindergarten age, and the general public to come to the public library on February, Friday, February 27th from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. for a small fee of $2 to see animals on display. Since 2007, every February 20th has been observed as World Day of Social Justice. This year, the United Nations focused on ending human exploitation and forced labor. Social justice speaks to equal opportunity for all, and in Dominica, this is exactly what the Labor Party administration has promoted from its inception in office. Kimani Seja tells us more. Social justice is about removing the limitations that people face because of their race, religion, gender, culture, or disability. It allows for peaceful coexistence through the promotion of gender equality, the rights of indigenous people or migrants, just to name a few. The United Nations pursues the promotion of social justice as the nucleus of its global mission of development and human dignity. In 2007, the United Nations General Assembly declared February 20 as World Day of Social Justice. The observance of this day aims to support efforts of the international community in poverty eradication, the promotion of full employment and decent work, gender equity, access to social well-being and justice for all. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on this occasion states, quote, In this crucial year for global development, as member states work to craft a post-2015 agenda and a new set of sustainable development goals, let us do our utmost to eradicate all forms of human exploitation. Let us strive to build a world of social justice where all people can live and work in freedom, dignity, and equality." End of quote. The Dominica Labour Party administration is characterized by its efforts to alleviate poverty and promote equal opportunity for all. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt focuses heavily on the plight of the less fortunate and has been adamant about installing and continuing government's safety net programs. The Social Protection and Poverty Alleviation Policy introduced in 2005 brought down the indigence level in Dominica from 10% in 2003 to 3.1% in the latest country poverty assessment conducted in 2009. 
This people-centered approach to governing has led to the Yes We Care program, the National Employment Program, the Housing Revolution Program, the expansion of the School Feeding Program, the Pensioners Grant, the Free School Transportation Program, and the list goes on. In 2005, the Women's Bureau, which was established in 1980, became the Bureau of Gender Affairs under this administration to give equal attention to the needs of both genders. The increase in the immigrants, particularly from Haiti and the Dominican Republic, also have unlimited opportunities for success in Dominica as long as their residence in Dominica is legal. In 2015 and beyond, government has pledged to, among other things, continue enhancing these programs to further reduce poverty, create more opportunities for better education, provide more housing, protect Dominica's children from abuse, and facilitate the disabled. This year, the focus for World Day of Social Justice is on ending human trafficking and forced labor. Kimani Senja for GIS News. Thanks, Kimani. And that's the English news. Mark Preston St. Luce is next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Le moins, c'est Mark Preston St. Luce. Premièrement, habitant Dominique Katapi a vu pour manager maladie Black Sigur Toka. Il y a un petit bagaille là, il y a Katapi a vu pour ses affaires de transportation par FIG qui affecte et puis maladie. Paul Salah sorti au officier quarantine ministre agriculteur Ryan Ansem. Comme vous savez, il y a des plantes qui qui a contrôlé Black Sigatoka. Bon, um, Black Sigatoka tout en Dominique, mais il y a place en Dominique en maladie pas si via qu'on les autres. Et ben nous les des monde um, souni pas fig parce que um, pas fig là même. Maladie sans les paifig là. So, si vous menez ou si vous menez un pot de smoke, vous avez un voiture, un vent, un carré, un vent, un sport là, et vous avez un aller à les de fig qui est tout près. So, encore, si vous avez un spray programme ou vous éradiquez le black cigarette dans un côté, vous n'avez pas de gérer l'inoculé chez nous, vous avez un sens et ça affecte la place là. So, encore, nous avons des gens. Nous avons fait contre le Black Sigatoka. C'est un bit de nous nous avons fait contre un pays qui a fait bien, qui a fait bien, Saint-Lucie qui a fait bien, Jamaïque qui a fait bien. Nous avons mis un programme en place pour nous garder comment nous avons contrôlé le Black Sigatoka. Parce que c'est bien important pour nous, ni fig, fig mi, pour nous, fig en bref. Nous avons encore tout le monde pour venir travailler contre le Black Sigatoka. Un autre nouvel ministère de tourisme est un honorable Robert Tong qui a fait parole plaisir bateau carnaval qui est retourné ici. Ministre Tong fait parole cela pendant la réception qui prend place à beau bateau là, mercredi pendant qu'il était lanqué. Il dit business carnaval est autant important pour l'économie payante et puis ça fait où là il est retourné, Dominique qui voit bénéfice. Ministère a souhaité ces passagers là qui ont été pour l'avantage. Experience unique PIA ni pour offer. Il dit aussi ça fait que ça fait au la carnaval qu'il n'a ici pendant ce moment-là en tant que passé. Ça même c'est autant important pour l'économie PIA. Ça fait touristes, ça fait tout le monde et puis Dominique attendait bon résultat hors visite cela. On a le temps d'ici et ni pièce problème si l'on visite cela, il y a que mettre mise en place pour adresser. En notre nouvelle, même fondation Baptiste Saint Joseph Angelique Baptiste, qu'a coué pour mon aîné yon et si l'on l'a bon Dieu pour à mon anneau. Baptiste fait parole salam pendant la présentation cérémonie pour une bibliothèque pour la communauté Saint Jo. Non, ni pour Wendy, non, ni pour Wendy, each other, because il paye pas enfants, non, mais là où garde, là où garde, So we need to, um, so we need faith at the body. Okay, where, même ça, Jésus qui fait, on est pour faire tout, because so aimer Jésus qui, on est pour aimer toutes les enfants. 
Et puis finalement, par les madame Nick oui, ouvert depuis l'élection en général l'année 2014, sa pompe la Jodéa. Premier bagaille à ce agenda-là, c'était appointement speaker et puis député speaker. Côté gouvernement, tu fait nomination Alex Boyd Knight pendant opposition tu nominé Joseph Pestena. Boyd Knight a reçu 21 votes pendant Pestena a tapé 10. Parlement a aussi voté sénateur Edward Regis comme député speaker. Plaisir même à ce tous les deux côté Parlement-là. One compliment pour Speaker Knight et puis Senator Regis. Tout le monde Parlement en parmi Speaker Knight et puis Senator Regis. C'est monté point l'office comme même Parlement. En même temps aussi, Président His Excellency Charles Savren a aussi délivré une adresse en Parlement-là. L'autre bagaille qui prend place, c'était l'adoption du dernier Parlement. Aussi, le Premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skirt présenté des bills. Le ministère récolté Honorable Johnson Drago. Ensemble, et puis le ministre Kalinago Honorable Cassius Daru présenté des bills qui concernent le ministère AIO. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous faire un cœur pour présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fusson Senlos. Casse de tout le monde. Un bon week-end. Au revoir. Coming up next, your tip of the day. Tajla Sweet Thing. Real men protect children, not harm them. Under the Convention of the Rights of a Child, a child is anyone under the age of 18 and its sexual abuse if you ask to see or touch their private parts, touch them inappropriately, show them or force them to touch your private parts, have sex with them, show them pornographic material or deliberately let them hear or see the act of sex. Real men don't abuse children and they don't encourage others to do it either. Be a real man. For more information, please contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. If you're working on getting leaner, don't cut out good healthy fats like omega-3 fatty acids. Lack of these nutrients can negatively impact the speed and how you age. To keep feeling and looking younger, incorporate more oily fish, walnuts, and flax seeds into your diet, which also helps keep the skin supple and wrinkle-free. Omega-3s also help boost the brain health and keeps the heart in good shape. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS news production team, I'm Kedisha Sedri. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.